welcome back to Book Stage and Screen. We have the legendary Rod Quantock with us today. Welcome, Rod. Hello, Samantha. Thanks for making me a legend. <laughs> Where's we... my statue? Yeah. Yeah, it's on the it's on the way. It's a rub, rubber chicken on the way. Good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hope you can use it in your show. Which we will we'll just get off uh, from the bat and say you're coming to the Wyndham Cultural Centre. You're winging your way into Wyndham here on the Friday the twenty first with your boredom protection policy show. I am indeed. Looking forward to it. And what can <laughs> well, we it's expect? It's a lovely from... theatre. I, I wrote a play a few years ago about Daniel Mannix and it had a performance down there. And it was, oh, yeah, it was a really nice theatre. Oh, fabulous. Mm. Didn't know you'd already winged your way down here. That's oh, fantastic. Well, I get around. <laughs> where, where are you from, Rob? Where, where's your... Where, oh, your... here, Melbourne. But um, specifically, uh, what's the specific address that we <laughs> yeah. can... Oh, okay, okay. P.O. Box 311. <laughs> Anybody's welcome to visit. The heavens are always on. That's very kind of you. Now, also, um, this show, what can we expect from your show? What can you expect? Yes. Oh, well, look, I suppose you just have to say that you expect it to be funny. I mean, that's <laughs> the bare minimum. Oh, look, uh, there's a... It's a show I, uh, or title I took from a show I did back in 2002 um, when uh, we were having a lot of trouble in the Middle East. We were having a lot of trouble with refugee policy and Pauline Hanson was in. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly looked around me and I thought, well, bugger me, isn't it a small world? <laughs> so, uh, it's a, yeah, so it's a bit of a reflection on how we got from there to here without anything changing, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well done, Australia. We yes. we, we did it. <laughs> Pretty proud <laughs> moment, that's isn't it? Australia giving itself a pat on the back. <laughs> Beautiful. So, how long have you been doing comedy shows for? Forty-eight years and three months. <laughs> wow. There you, you go. go. Do you want the days? Like the days. <laughs> Let's run through every appearance. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, look, we first bit anyway. So we do run through a bit of that in the uh, first half of the show. Okay. <laughs> I think it's important to tell people how I got to where I am, and then I can tell them how they got to be where they are. <laughs> and then we can work out who to blame. Yes. Well, Pauline's a good start. Um, now, you've been to every Melbourne comedy festival, is that correct? Yes, I'm the only one that's done them all. Yeah, yes. I think we spoke to Greg Fleet, and he he dobbed you in as the as the only uh, well, as the only one who's done them all. Yeah, so Greg, well done. Greg's probably got twenty five or twenty six, I suppose, something like that. Yeah, he just but missed out. Nobody yeah. can beat my record. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so is um is that the the pinnacle of your year, the Melbourne Comedy Festival, or do you prefer doing your own shows, travelling around? Oh, look, I don't. The, the, the Comedy Festival, and I'm sure almost everybody's been at some time over those 30 years um for performers it's um how do you describe it? it's just huge yeah. i think there were something like 40 shows in the first festival and now there's <laughs> i think over 600 so you tend to get a bit lost in it now so yeah. um the last couple of years i've just sort of done uh, one-off appearances oh. uh, in the festival just to say i was in it yeah. um and next year I might leave it to somebody else, I'm not sure. Um, look, it's very exciting, and particularly yeah. for the first week, um, it's very collegiate, or collegial. Yeah. Um, so we're all uh, we're all in the same boat, really. We're all mm. spent a month or more being very anxious about how it's going to go, and then it started, and you start to think about how you can fix it. And So, the, yeah, there's a lot of um, comedians around that are sharing that experience. So... Uh, it, it gets pretty chummy because life for a stand-up comedian basically is very lonely. I'm, I shouldn't say lonely, but you're certainly on your own 99% mm. of the time. So when I come to Wyndham, I will be the only comedian in Wyndham on that night. <laughs> um, and then the next day there probably won't be any comedians in Wyndham. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so you spend most of your life um, sort of backstage on your own. You go out and do your show on your own. I meet people in the foyer. Yeah. Um, at the start, I take their tickets at the door, I sit them down, I come out at interval and make sure they're all okay, oh. and wave them goodbye when they leave. Wow. Um, otherwise, it. it is extremely quite, lonely. Quite the host. <laughs> yes. Yeah, quite the host. Yeah. Oh, indeed. Now, I remember when Tony Abbott was elected, uh, pretty much every comedian in the country <laughs> posted something about what the hell have you idiots done? Yes. Uh, oh, I think uh, yeah, not only comedians did, did that. I, I paid close attention to that. 
mm. first two hours after he got elected and uh, the suicide rate was up <laughs> extraordinarily. The demand for depression tablets has skyrocketed mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of people just locked themselves away and, and for all intents and purposes disappeared. Now, I think people were a bit shocked when that happened. But uh, I, I, I did think, though, that you know comedians as a whole were given a, a huge gift of material. When yeah, well, that's the wonderful thing about politics if you do political comedy, and more and more people are doing that, um, is that... Yeah, it's it's just the line of human endeavour that just keeps on giving. I mean, I tried to do satire about the opera, but you know, <laughs> there, there's only so much you can say, and then you've got to move on. But politics is, whilst it seemingly doesn't change, um, uh, the people who play the game do, and the way that they play it changes a great deal. So, you know, I mean, if you're in America at the moment, you, as a comedian, I, I think you'd You'd be pinching yourself every time Donald <laughs> Trump opened his mouth. Um, so yeah, there are some glorious people who come in and out of it, um, and you know, and uh, it's also, you know, I get stuck into Andrew Bolton, the Murdoch press, and mm-hmm. yeah. um, you know, there's there's all these hangers on, or probably they're not hangers on. I think the politicians are the hangers on, mm-hmm. and the Murdoch press are the drivers. But um, yeah, so it's a uh, yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, the Kennedy years for me were probably the best years I had. <laughs> oh, God, I miss that, man. Comedically speaking, yes. yes of course. Well, that's the uh, look. You live in a terrible world where you wish that the worst would happen because it's good for your mm. career, but you're very <laughs> conscious that a lot of people suffer. So, uh, I hope that the suffering people come to the show and we get a good laugh about it. But do you look at some of the idiots that get elected and just go, "Oh, this this will be a gold mine." This this number. Oh is. yes, this uh, Malcolm Douglas. Is that his name? This new senator who doesn't believe in climate change and yep. evolution, and you look at him and you, you can understand why he doesn't believe in evolution. It certainly <laughs> didn't impact on his family line. Yep. Um, so you get these people, but of course, I mean, they're, they're thrown up by the Senate voting system, and people in their right mind wouldn't ever vote for somebody like that in numbers sufficient to get them across the line uh, normally. But that's where they come from, and uh, they have a very short uh, period in office. Um, He will be a one-timer, I would imagine, um, and an embarrassment every time he opens his mouth. But I'm there. I've I've got a Google alert out for him, (laughs) and uh, I'm I'm just ready to pounce. And do you touch in your show on the um, circus that is going over on in America? Oh, yeah, look, just a little bit. I mean, yeah. I, and I relate it back, you know, go back to 2002, George W. Bush was in. Mm. So he was just Donald Trump without the hair. <laughs> um, so, again, you know, things haven't changed that much. Um, Turnbull is a seemed, I think, uh, over the last few years, everybody thought, well, here's the man for Australia, but um, somebody's got his balls in a jar somewhere and he's not getting them back. Um, so, you know, he's just basically emasculated and can do nothing. He's a bit um, of a disappointment, so a, isn't he? Sorry? He's a bit of a disappointment. Is a well, fair, he, fair he took a poison chalice and uh, he stuck with all those right-wing uh, Corey Bernardis and those people who were just so far right-wing. And the deal they made was that he wasn't allowed to change the things that he went... I think he's lived his life thinking he should change. So for him, it's um, it's really difficult. He's clearly a patient man, and Corey Bernard is getting on. And there are stairs in Parliament, and <laughs> you might fall down them. You just never know. <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's something to think about. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I, I send little messages like that to Malcolm all the time. <laughs> oh. Sounds great. Yeah, so there's... What's it? Uh, Chris, Christian... He's, he's the largest politician going around at the moment. Is it George Christen? Oh, this is a big jolly fellow. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I can't. No, I, no, I can't remember. He's, he's not no. memorable. No, no, no. <laughs> no. His name. He's just large. Yeah, but he's kind yeah. of crazy. He's probably the yeah, craziest. He's got a family meal size, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Something for yeah, everyone. Yeah. Um, now, you've got an Order of Australia medal, is that correct? Yes, I have. Yes. And, and were you I'll surprised when you, you got like. that? Or? <laughs> um, yes, I was, actually. I, you, know, you never find out who nominated you. Ah. Uh, once 
you hear that um, they send you a letter saying you've been nominated and would you accept it because I don't want people either knocking it back or accepting it and then giving it back as a protest. Oh, right. um, so you have to go through that. So you suddenly realise that if they're writing to you saying you've been nominated and would you accept it, you must be pretty close. Yeah. Um, and then a few things that happened over the sort of 18 months, two years prior to that suddenly took on a, a new meaning to me um, where people asked me to have a chat about seemingly nothing and I never worked out why. Um, <laughs> But in terms of who nominates you, I think it's you can guess and guess and guess, but they'll never tell you, and the person who nominates you will never tell you. So ah. um, it's all a bit of a mystery. Right. But uh, yeah, no, it did come as a surprise, and I was um, in a strange way very flattered. Tony Abbott was prime minister, so I got it. I got a letter from George Brandis congratulating me on my OAM. Uh, I won't tell you what I did with it. It involved a button and a lot of water. Um, anyway. So that's interesting. Yes. <laughs> it is interesting, isn't it? And um, what yeah. have you actually... No. So is it a medal that you get? What, what is the... Uh, you, look, you get a, a... Wow, what do you get? You get this big velvety sort of... Oh, what, it's almost an A3 size... Um, folder covered in velvet and printed with gold and in there there's a tiny little button that you wear on your lapel yep. I think there, I haven't looked since I got it I think there's a tie bar and there is a sort of metalish affair which is slightly bigger um, but I wear the button um, it's just permanently on my jacket and only two people in geez, only two a year and a half uh, only two people have ever said oh you've got an OAM Oh. Everybody else thinks it must be Poppy Day or Gold Nose Day or something. <laughs> I've got no idea what they think it is. Yeah. And does it give you anything like priority at drive yeah, through at McDonald's get, uh, or something? Yes, all your parking fines are waived <laughs> and you do get a booklet of uh, discount um, <laughs> <laughs> organisations that will get no, there's absolutely no benefit and because people don't recognise the button, there's not even sort of congratulations. <laughs> I'm getting a little you can now buy little badges that you can program in a, uh, a flashing LED message that scrolls across the badge, and I'm going to get that and put it next to the the badge, and it just says OAM, 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 OAM. Very you can have one. that um, yeah. during your show. Just you Yeah, know. if you just turn it on and people go, oh, no, <laughs> yes. I had no idea. We better laugh more. <laughs> yes. We're in the company of greatness. Mm, that's right. <laughs> Well, wonderful. Um, where do you go to after Wyndham? Do you see all around the country? Oh, or? It's, uh, it's only Victoria. So okay. I think I come uh, to Wyndham via Gippsland mm -hmm. and then it's sort of out to the west, um, um, you know, Horsham and uh, down to the coast and all around there. And then I think, um, yeah, it's a strange sort of thing. It, uh, they try to organise it. So if you go to Gippsland, you do mm. three shows in Gippsland and then come back home. But this time, I think I come back home and then go back again. But anyway, it's yep. all over the place. There's a what? nice person who picks me up oh. and drives me there and puts up the lights and the sound. And so I don't even have to worry about where I'm going to be on which particular night. But last, uh, <laughs> last Friday night, I was in a little town called Yark. Oh. As you drive into Yark, there's a sign that says, where the fark is Yark. <laughs> and uh, nobody knows where it is, but it was fantastic. It was the first show they'd ever had in their community hall. And uh, ah. So, yeah, the country touring part of it's really wonderful. Well, um, I think if you'd yeah. seen a sign like that as a comedian, you'd say, yes, well, this is my country. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I'm sure there's something like that as I drive into Wyndham. Oh, if there isn't a bit of pressure now, <laughs> yeah, we might have to but quick, quickly whip the, the paint. Yeah, might look right. a little bit wet on, on the way in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, now, Captain Snooze. That, that's yeah. where I first probably saw you. Would, would that be? Would that be? Would that be about right? Well, that oh. ran from oh, late seventies, mm -hmm. uh, probably seventy six or seventy seven. I think I started them, and ended ninety six. So just wow. gone twenty years. So. Yes, if you didn't see me, you were blind <laughs> or um, a Luddite, a technophobe. <laughs> and, and what did you score out of that? You must have got some free good mattresses, yes? No. Oh, what? No, it's a franchise. So ah. it has a management company, but then each franchisee does its own buying and selling. Huh. So I did get some discount pillows, and <laughs> when I got them home, 
uh, they were seconds and they actually didn't fit a standard pillowcase. Uh, they were all cut the wrong way. So that's as close as I got to a freebie. Wow. And uh, after that, it was, um, I just, did I get a dis- I don't think I even bothered to go and talk to somebody about a discount. I just said to them, look, I'm going to go very publicly with the Herald Sun to 40 Winks to buy a bed <laughs> and you better do something before I get there. Well, we like you using your power for good. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> yeah. Well, there's, there's a lesson for all the children listening. Uh, Wonderful. Yes, absolutely, yep. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we can hear more of your uh, biting wit at the Board and Protection Policy on Friday the 21st at the Wyndham Cultural Centre. We'll be getting onto that sign because we don't want to be outdone by Yark. No. No, yes. So we'll be getting on to that. And thanks so much for joining us today, oh, Roy. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's been very enjoyable. And uh, so thank you very much. And if you uh, do manage to get down there yourselves, come say hello. Uh, we will. We, we you will don't do. get anything special. But oh, well, like, no. I'll point to the badge at least. <laughs> yep, okay, good. <laughs> thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.